All right, good morning, everyone. I'd like to call to order uh, the Judicial and Public Safety meeting of September 6, 2022. Uh, roll call, please. Chair Renahan. Here. Member Chaplin. Here. Member Covert. Here. Member Desart. Here. Member Eka. Here. Member Garcia. Here. Member Krajewski. Member Ozog. <clears throat> Excuse me. Member Pichalski. Here. Member Schwarzy. Here. Member Salmon. Here. Member Zay. All right, great, thank you. We have a quorum. Uh, do we have any public comment? No, we do not. Okay, thank you. So good morning, everyone. I uh, hope everyone had a great Labor Day, a little time off. Um, we do have a full agenda today with our last two budget presentations. We have the Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management and the 18th Judicial Court, Circuit Court. So thank you, Director Diekman and uh, Chief Judge Pope Joy and uh, Court Administrator Armstrong for being here today to up update the committee on your 2023 budget requests. Um, I'd like to draw the committee's attention to items 7B, C, and 7D. Um, these all have to do with the Sheriff's Office. These items are FY23 capital requests that were presented um, at the Finance Committee August 23rd to be purchased this year with surplus funds. So there was a consensus in finance that these requests should be brought this year to alleviate the 2023 budget. They're up for vote today and for formal approval and passage. So it looks like the Sheriff's Office is here in full force today. Um, if you have any questions. Additional um, item 9G, um, we're gonna pull that today in order to get a, a better breakdown because it is such a large number. So um, also draw your attention to items 8, D, E, and F. You can see these are being brought forward on behalf of ETSB. So thank you. Uh, Director uh, Zerwin and uh, Member Schwarzy, Chair of ETSB. Um, so basically this is being brought forward. Uh, ETSB had planned to pay for this radio communication and star radio, statewide radio system airtime, but there's been a change in law so they can no longer do that. And so they're asking that we pay for these costs. So this is regards to the sheriff, the state's attorney's office and the office of emergency management. So they did not have a plan for that equipment. So the request is that this be paid through a four-year payment plan. So as we know, radio communication is primary way. We dispatch our officers, especially in times of emergency. And these are 12 year old end of life uh, radio system. So anyway, four-year consideration. And with that, we'll move on to our presentation. So. Thank you, Director Diekman, Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Um, we look forward to your presentation. Good morning, Chair Renahan, members of the County Board, elected officials and uh, public safety partners. Good morning. My name is Craig Diekman. Um, thank you for giving me a few minutes this morning. I'd like to take about five minutes to highlight some of the key activities from OHSCM, our agency this year. You should have received this packet via email last week. So you have all the details. I'll just touch on the highlights and then I'll take just a few more minutes to discuss our fiscal year 23 budget request. And of course, answer any questions you may have. So next slide, please. So our vision and mission, um, again, are in, in short, we're trying to make DuPage County a less vulnerable, more disaster resilient county. And we do that by helping our communities build their capacity to deal with any type of disaster, be man-made or natural, as well as acts of terrorism. Next slide. Our department organization, I realize again, that there's a lot on these slides, but the intent was that you had them in advance for your own reference. Um, our department organization is very simple. Myself as director with our administrative assistant, we have four emergency management coordinators and four emergency management specialists for 10 people full time. The specialists support the agency at large. The coordinators have areas of focus. Uh, we also have um, uh, five paid on call members, which is a grandfathered program, as well as 20 reservists. Reservists are sworn volunteers who help us in both the emergency operations center, as well as with our communications unit, which is very active. Then on this uh, security division side, we have Chief Briggs, Chief of Security, our Deputy Chief of Security, two lieutenants, and approximately 25 contract security officers. Next slide, please. 
So this is all framed in context of service to the community. I'll begin with some uh, highlighting a few incidents and operational support from this year. Uh, sadly, COVID-19 continues. Our role right now is to manage the uh, PPE. We handled 171 transactions in uh, since December 1. So everything I'm reporting on is, is in the last nine months. We also activated the Emergency Operations Center many times. 21 of those instances were for severe weather events, which included tornadoes. Uh, well, the Father's Day of June 21, that's outside of this frame, but we had the Oak Brook tornado, the Roselle to Schaumburg tornado, and most recently, there was a tornado that occurred in Naperville on the DuPage Will line just a few months ago. We also were involved in the, active, the Highland Park active shooter incident. We sent 70 radios immediately when requested with four communication volunteers or reservists. And about two hours later, under um, uh, Coordinator Neville's direction uh, here with me today, we sent um, uh, the state communications trailer for which we're the custodial agency with four more volunteers. And then two of us were also activated in the emergency operations center virtually. The, uh, and then lastly, the Oak Brook Mall active shooter last December. Um, we were prepared to support the coroner in the, um, uh, if, if it became a mass fatality event, which fortunately it did not. Moving on, next slide. Some of the events that we helped with, the DuPage County Board Fine Arts Festival, Ribfest, and the DuPage County Fair, just three of the more recent. We developed incident action plans. Uh, we serve as a weather liaison role with the National Weather Service. And then also with the election, as I briefed to this uh, committee previously, we were embedded with the election division this year. We had people on site all day with the deputy director of elections, as well as uh, full activation of our emergency operations center. Moving on to planning, we have about three dozen plans that we maintain for the county. The emergency operations plan is currently being updated. Uh, we help the communities with their emergency operations plans. And we most recently secured a grant just pending some final signatures to update the county's natural hazard mitigation plan, which is uh, done once every five years. Next slide on training. We, about two months ago, we hired a, a new training and exercise coordinator. And in that time, we've scheduled 19 classes for the balance of uh, 2022. And we've already scheduled 15 courses for 2023. These range from one day courses to three or four day courses. And they're held, um, we are the host agency for those. We also provide ongoing training to the communities. Next slide, exercises. So basically, we, we, our cycle begins with planning. We write plans on blue sky days for dark and stormy nights. We train to those plans, and then we exercise the training. And that finally yields an after action report where we look at what worked and what could have been done differently, and we start the process over. We worked with West Chicago on a school district reunification exercise. We worked with FEMA Region 5, which covers the six Great Lakes states on a large scale multi-state communications exercise and had numerous FEMA officials at our office for three days. And then we also um, prepared a tabletop exercise with the circuit court, which we'll be holding early next year. And we held a tabletop exercise with the election division prior to the primary in June. Next slide. Our campus security division under Chief Briggs is, is busy, responded to 315 documented incidents in the last nine months and almost 1900 miscellaneous calls for service, as well as uh, physical security improvements on this campus, which we've previously discussed. Next slide, communications unit. Um, this unit is very, very busy, too much to, to go into this morning. Of, of key is building out what's called rapid comp four. We, DuPage County, won an agreement with the state. We received a uh, basically a communications truck and three pallets of equipment. And we were told, design it, build it, make it ready to go, and DuPage County can keep it. Oh, of course, it serves the whole area. And our group has got that done. They finished just a couple of days ago, and it'll be used in an exercise this weekend with the Illinois National Guard. Just highlighting a couple of other things, we continue to work closely with the Sheriff's Office on maintaining network and communications equipment in the uh, one of the mobile command posts, and we helped uh, with some design elements of the new Merit command post. Our reservists, as I said, are very busy. They contributed almost 2,400 hours of volunteer time in the last nine months, and uh, these are highly skilled people that just, just love doing what they do, and they want to give back. We're, we're thrilled to have them. And then lastly, we're helping ETSB with rollout of the new radios for the county. Social media, um, we maintain an active, next slide, I'm sorry. 
We maintain an active social media presence, again, largely under uh, Coordinator Neville. And um, I won't go into much detail there. I think everybody knows what social media is and how it's used. Next slide, please. The uh, community partner engagement, we're involved in, in many areas there. Uh, we work the DuPage County, work with the DuPage County Chiefs of Police, the three uh, Mavis uh, Fire Divisions. We we're working with the uh, Regional Office of Education on the School Safety Task Force on reunification plans and uh, a mutual aid program. And we're also meeting uh, with the mayors and managers. Those two meetings we've had in the last nine months have yielded requests to work on two large scale, full scale exercises in the next year. Full scales take about a year to plan. So we look on uh, delivering those next summer sometime. Next slide, please. We maintain numerous Homeland Security partnerships with the Illinois Terrorism Task Force, of which we're members and sit on various committees with the FBI, with the state's Terrorism and Information Center, and with information sharing organizations. And this is all in the interest of information sharing, intelligence, and keeping strong partnerships. Now we'll move on to the budget presentation. So uh, again, just a few notes on this, our personnel budget. First, I'll start with OHSEM, then we'll move on to the security division. Just a very slight increase in the uh, personnel and you should have all received the Oracle report in your email. The, um, we have reorganized the agency, but we left full-time personnel count at 10. We uh, are hoping to adjust a, a few coordinator salaries for parity within the department. And this does not include COLA, if approved. On commodities and contractual, there's, there's a $13,800 increase of which $7,300 is budget neutral for things that were previously uh, paid for by the departments are now charged to the receiving departments, such as fuel, auto repair, postage, and the balances for some personal safety equipment and to replace worn out attire for um, identity at major incidents and to keep um, our communications unit safe when they're working out in the, uh, the elements with the communications vehicles. And then we move $5,000 from one account to another just to, to better uh, clarify it, but that's a wash. So a slight increase overall. We move on to the next slide. And that slide right there is just the uh, information I just provided to you. Next slide, we'll leave this one up so you can look at the numbers while I uh, address them. On the campus security, we are expecting a slight increase in reimbursements um, as the overall cost of security um, with a new security contract will most likely go up. We are um, preparing a bid to hit the street for uh, the new contract that'll begin March 1st. So uh, this probably is not the time for me to go into much detail on what we anticipate there, but we would be happy to have that conversation in an executive, executive session at another date. Uh, personnel, no change to the full-time count to four. Uh, some slight increases in the personnel cost for adjustments that were made in late 2021. And again, this does not include COLA. And again, on the commodities and contractual portion, there's a $193,000 increase which is a $40,000 or $41,000 budget neutral, as well as the anticipated increase in the security contract. Next slide, please. One more. Okay, these last two, education and outreach and emergency deployment, there's really no change there. Um, these are accounts that are held. One is for the weather seminar, which we have not held the last few years due to the pandemic. And the other is for when our communications assets go on an emergency deployment, um, if we get reimbursed by the state. Again, this hasn't happened in the 10 years I've been here, but we maintain these accounts and the treasurer keeps watch over them for us. So with that, that concludes our highlighted accomplishments as well as the budget request. And I would uh, be happy to take any questions if there are any. Uh, Vice Chair Bajowski, and then I'm gonna wrap up. I don't have to tell me. Our contractual is up 17%. Do we market this out to see whether or not uh, that, that's competitive or do we just went with the 17% increase? On the security division, sir? Yes. Uh, that is being marketed out. And Chief Briggs has been doing extensive research with the marketplace, both on our current contract and as we get ready to put a bid out for a new one. Definitely. And are we having a hard time getting staff as we are in the care center or are we fully staffed? Are we down? Is it difficult to find people? Because it seems to me that's a big issue 
Chief. Especially with security, because I think security is kind of an important component to, uh, to campus. Chief. We're running into the same issues as care center. Um, we have a higher turnover than we did two or three years ago. Um, so we're running into the same issues. Right now I'm satisfied with the staff that we have. Um, I'm continuously working with the, the contracted um, supervisors to make sure that they're doing the job that that's expected. But our contract is with the same entity that does both the staff as well as supervisors, correct? That's correct. And we've had them for how many years now? Um, this will be, we're in our sixth year right now. All right, and when their contract was up, we did do a market study and then they came back that we're, I, I just, hey, it seems to me once you get your foot in the door, it becomes a career position here. And I wanna make sure we stay competitive and that we don't just let things lag. So I wanna make sure that we're being a little proactive so you can tell this board that yes, we are looking to keep this at a you know modest increase. And I understand things have gone up and what you're telling me is 17% is the best we could have done under these circumstances. That's what I'm looking at when I look at the median around the Wheaton area for the type of security that we do here. Um, that seems to be the the 17% seems to be pretty accurate. Um, although I do expect it possibly to be even more. So I hate to call it an estimate, but it's the best educated estimate I can have right now. And we're not to a shortage where there's any breach of security because we're not adequately staffed. We're, we're fully staffed at security. We, could, we just don't have our full capacity. Is that a correct statement? That's correct. We, we have a higher turnover. Um, we have, in a lot of cases, because we're a little lower paid, um, we get especially some of our younger officers that come on. They're looking to get out the police departments and, and fire departments. So it's kind of a stepping stone for them. But they're, they're doing a, a good job, and I watch it on a daily basis. Um, you know, sometimes I have concerns, just like all of us do in each one of our departments, um, but we try to watch it as close as we can. I haven't been aware or advised as vice chair of any incidents we've had with security. Has there been anything in the last year that has warranted any discussion on this for your budget? Other than what we're discussing is the financial part. All right, all right. thank you very much. Member Eckhoff, and then Member Desart, and then we're gonna wrap up. You mentioned that you are going to have uh, two full-scale exercises. Are those going to be school exercises or shopping centers? Or there are very preliminary. One looks to be a uh, shopping center exercise that would include most of the county because if we have an incident at a shopping center, most of the county will be responding, at least from law enforcement. And um, the other is to be decided, probably a school. Okay. All right. So you don't know where this which school. Uh, no, sir. Um, that um, I could tell you the one request came from Addison, and there's an initial planning meeting coming up next Monday. We'll know more after that. Addison had a full. Skip. I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. Um, the other one's with Lombard. That's next Monday. Addison will be in about six weeks. We'll have Addison had a full scale one about ten years ago, and we North, and then you said West Chicago both had reunification ones. So I know sometimes you get resistance from school districts about putting those on because they're, like you said, a heavy lift. But I would hope that more of them would want to participate. I suspect we will. I'm, I'm working very closely with Dr. Rossetti and, and ROE right now on a number of school projects. And I think there'll be more requests coming as Thank we um, strengthen that relationship. Thank you. Member Desart? There we go. Thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation. I'm looking back through my county emails and even the deleted emails, and I did not receive this presentation. So could you please send that to me? I'd appreciate that. Yes, um, one question. I know that you said that we'd have to go into executive uh, session to discuss this further, but I think that you can probably give me some general details. Campus security, you're asking for 28.5% increase over last year. What are some general things that you can talk about why it's going up almost 30%? Thank you. Thank you. Most of that is with the, um, as I looked at my analysis, the commodities went up 115%, but those are the budget neutral items that came over that we weren't charged for previously. And when you say commodities, what do you mean? Um, specifically, it's fuel for the, the vehicles on campus, uh, security vehicles, the um, uh, repair and maintenance on auto, small amount for printing postage, but it, it looks proportionally large because it's a small amount. So any change results in a big increase. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you. Very thorough report. I think we're getting a good bang for our buck out of our OHSCM. Oh, we're getting a good bang for our oh. buck, I think. I think you're doing thank a lot of good work. Much. 
Um, all right, uh, Chief Judge Pope Joy, and uh, are you coming? Okay. Please come up, and we're going to hear about the uh, Circuit Court FY23 budget. Okay. Okay, good morning to all. I didn't know I was going to be the very last budget presentation of all of them. Um, in my competitive days over 30 years, I was really in last place. Um, but I had a really good finishing kick all the time. So we will bring it home here and quickly and efficiently get through this presentation also. It's great to once again to see all of you and to be present for our fiscal 2023 20, budget presentation. I know that I'm only allowed about 10 minutes of time but I would be remiss if I didn't digress for just a moment. Come this December, I will be two years into my three-year term as chief judge. It has been an honor and it has been a privilege to work with all of you and to get to know each and every one of you on a personal level. Your professionalism and your friendship have partnered with me to build a collaborative bridge between the legislative and judicial branches of DuPage County government. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your tough questions. Thank you for your oversight. And thank you for your understanding of the inner workings of the judiciary and the needs that we have. Together, we have ensured a strong, resilient, and efficient operation of our DuPage County Courthouse for now and for the foreseeable future. Your legacy of leadership will live on and will benefit the citizens for years and years to come. Now for my budget presentation. The materials I believe were sent over on Friday. I hope if anybody's missing them, please let me know. Our budgets are relatively flat. We are working with the finance department on salary issues and will continue to do so and work in a collaborative manner with them. We are continuing to operate as leanly as possible. But as you are all well aware, the court system has changed significantly over the past several years. Okay, this is my next slide, so I'll keep it right where it is. Thank you. <laughs> so from pre-COVID to COVID and from our continuing exit from COVID, we have adjusted to the challenges that these transitions have required. First, in regard to remote proceedings, that has been our biggest responsive change. We are now hearing cases by Zoom in every division in the courthouse, except for traffic. Zoom hearings are covered for arbitration, evidentiary hearings and the like. And that easy access to Zoom has been afforded through the clerk's website. We also have some technology advances that have come through. Our second phase of technology upgrades are expected in November of 2022, and they will improve the hybrid experience. Those are all ARPA funded. In addition, the AOIC grant has allowed us to get additional large monitors in the courtroom to further assist with the hybrid experience. Next slide, please. Although we are DuPage County judges, we are also employed by the state of Illinois. That requires a partnership relationship between the state and the county as it relates to the judiciary. Now, we have a number of things that we need to do from a state mandate, and that's referenced on this slide. The Supreme Court has determined and set various mandates that we have to follow. Remote proceedings, Zoom is clearly here to stay statewide. Access to justice, abiding, affording more availability for individuals who are self-represented or don't know how to navigate through the court system. Language interpretation for all court programs and court activities. Increased support and help for those self-represented litigants. The courts are providing more services and connecting people to more resources. And we have time standards that have been imposed on the handling of these cases by the Supreme Court. All of this adds to the time and the effort in adjudicating our volume of cases from start to finish. Next slide, please. Obviously, we all have some legislative impact that comes into play, primarily the Safety Act this past year. As we all are aware, that eliminates cash bonds effective January 1 of 2023. It will now require evidentiary hearings seven days a week in our new courtroom a new bond court courtroom that is being currently constructed. 
We anticipate more defendants on pretrial monitoring because less will be in jail pending bond presentation. We will now have to manage 85,000 outstanding warrants that have cash bonds on them when they come in and are collected. And we'll also have to manage the status of inmates on January 1, 2023, because any inmate that is in jail on bond will be required to have an evidentiary hearing as to whether they should remain that way or not. The judges, the clerk, the state's attorney, the public defender, the sheriff, and the probation department, our stakeholders, as I call them, have been working together hand in hand in regard to the transitions required. We now lead the state in determining and setting up procedures, orders, technology, and the innovation that is needed in order to ensure that we will be on the ground running and in effect on January 1, 2023. Next slide, please. As you are aware, the Chief Judge's Office manages and oversees nine budgets. With each of these budgets, our trial court administrator, Suzanne Armstrong, and I work with a great team of leaders. We have Bob McCullen and Sharon Donald from the Probation Department. We have Sue Mankovic from the Jury Commission. Our CPA and Assistant Court Administrator, Catherine Thompson. Kimberly Verist, handling our mediations and arbitrations. And Juanita Harrell, Head of the Library Services. Next slide, please. This pie chart reflects the comparative size of each of these budgets. It should be noted that the Probation Department exceeds 50% of our budget. But be reminded that the state of Illinois reimburses us 56% of that amount. Now, let me touch on some of the high points of some of these budgets. Next slide, please. Circuit Court. I will highlight some of our accomplishments over the past year. Next slide, please. Oh, that's it. There you go. Um, our eviction program, obviously something that has come to need pre, middle, and post-COVID. We have now distributed over $3.4 million in court-based rental assistance through our eviction mediation program. We are leading the state, not only in the number of applications, but in the amount of money distributed. Evictions remain very high. We have over 300 a month currently being filed. That is more than two times what we had a year ago. But with the eviction help desk and our mediation center, that has all been embraced by the legal community. Therefore, there have been more referrals to that. Therefore, more direct connection to the state and the county resources and therefore more alternative dispute resolution. Next slide, please. Our drug court. We have um, designed an expansion of drug court and veterans court programs and have been awarded a Department of Justice grant for 568 some thousand dollars in developing community-based recovery centers and increasing the use of recovery coaches in peer support. Next slide, please. The NAMI Award, our 18 judicial specialty courts have been honored by NAMI DuPage with the Community Partnership Award, quote, for their enhancement of the quality of life for participants and their leadership in establishing a new version of justice that benefits us all, end of quote. Our specialty courts are the rock stars of our circuit for what they do, how they help people, and how they help people get out of the quagmire of the legal system and out to where they're getting help and assistance. Next slide, please. Of our nine budgets, the circuit court budget is the only place where we are asking for any new personnel. One, we, we now have one deputy court administrator, our CPA, Catherine Thompson. We desperately need an additional individual to assist her, to handle and process invoices, to oversee funding and grant procurements, for receipts and to assist us with Supreme Court mandates and reporting requirements. This individual will be cross-trained to handle any aspect and any position in the Chief Judge's office to handle us in case of any contingencies, any vacancies, or any vacation times that come. But that is a desperate need that we have to make our office run smoothly. An additional desperate need that we have, the second one is for one more interpreter. We now have four interpreters that are stretched to the limit, trying to get to 40 some courtrooms at different times, at different places, under different circumstances, 
to assist individuals, especially those that are self-represented litigants. We need another person to assist in that regard. It is a huge hole that needs to get filled. Next slide, please. The Jury Commission. Next slide, please. As you can see from these numbers, we are back up to the full speed of operation. Due to your allocation of CARES Act money, we built courtroom 3011 and expanded courtroom 4000. Those will remain in the built out condition to cover any future contingencies that may ever happen within our circuit. They will not go back to where they were and they, we will not be back asking you for assistance in that regard. Matter of fact, right now in our criminal floor, we have a double jury trial that is going. Two defendants, two juries in one courtroom. We were able to do that in courtroom 4000 and with our expanded jury box with chairs we can fill in, we can put all 28 people, 12 jurors, two alternates for each trial in the same jury box for the presentation. It's the efficient handling of justice. It's the way it should be done. And we can only do that thanks to what you folks helped us with in regard to courtroom 4000. And what's to be reminded is with these jurors, when they're coming into the courthouse, sometimes that's the only impact those people have, the only contact they have with our court system. We constantly poll them, not only after their time in the jury commission, but after any verdict that they rendered. And our marks are high flying for how they say we are handling activities, handling and processing the time with them and the like. Next slide, please. Probation, next slide, please. Here are some more significant accomplishments to brag about with our probation department. They received a $359,000 grant from Adult Redeploy Illinois. We have a $5.4 million reimbursement from the state. But what's especially important to note, our adult probation success rate is 81% compared to 71% statewide. And our juvenile court diversion program had a 94% success rate in 2021, 100% to date in 2022. Next slide, please. As these numbers show in regard to pretrial services, we are fulfilling the increased need due to the increased numbers that are, going to, that are existing now and are gonna to continue to increase over the next year. Next slide, please. A further positive result of the hard work and effort and commitment of our probation personnel. 91.5% of defendants supervised by pretrial services appeared for their court dates. 92.1% of defendants supervised by pretrial services were not rearrested. Those numbers lead the metropolitan areas of this state by a wide margin. Next slide, please. DOI evaluation, next slide, please, yes. As you can see from these numbers, we need these services to be continuing because of the continuing rise of concerns in this regard. We have a continued commitment to help keep our highways safe and to help those individuals that are involved in similar driving abuses. Next slide, please. Detention, screening, and transport. Next slide, please. This, of course, represents our continuing transition following the closure of our youth home, which have benefited our facilities management and which have resulted in monetary savings to the county. Next slide, please. A law library. Next slide, please. A law library is not just a room with some books. Our li law library represents an active self-help center where we are assisting self-represented litigants on a daily basis. And attorneys that come in also are using those services in the library. The, the library provides legal research, information, assistance to all residents by email, telephone, and phone. And they assist those individuals, especially those self-represented individuals, that come in and need assistance with the Zoom proceedings and getting their face and their case in front of their judge. Probation fees, next slide, please. We have received approval from the AOIC, which you're all aware, I assume, to include residential placement for juveniles and allows us to move $348,000 out of the general fund. These probation fees that are received go to payments to the DuPage County Health Department for treatment of mentally ill defendants. It goes to the purchase of bulletproof vests, the purchase of IT equipment, vehicle maintenance and fuel, drug testing supplies, and interpreting services for those in the probation department alone. Next slide. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time and attention that you have given to me this morning. Uh, my staff and I are available for any questions that you might have at this time. 
Kowalski. Uh, uh, judge, I just want to say thank you. I don't know any chief judge that has reached out to county board members and had such an open door policy that you've had. And I appreciate the working relationship you have to this board because you've showed this board so much respect by being so inclusive on everything that you do. I'm concerned about the safety act. Is that what, what is that going to do with staff and courts and states? You know, how how much of it, do we have any idea what what that's going to be when when you tell me that we have, you know, eighty five thousand warrants? It just seems overwhelming. How are we going to hit the ground running in uh, January? Well, two comments. We're going to hit the ground running, and we're going to suck it up and get it done. A non legal word, but we have created a committee of Josh Deaton, who will be the judge handling the bond court call, our presiding judge of misdemeanor, Karen Wilson, our presiding judge of felony, Brian T. Lander, and Dimitri Panusius, that has been involved in orders of protection and other things over the last couple of years. That committee has been working since June to put together the procedures, what's going to happen, how we're going to handle things, how we're going to do these hearings, what we're going to do on January 1 with all of the people in custody with bonds, how we're going to handle these warrants, all the issues that I laid out, we have been walking through that. That committee work, works together every two weeks. And I'll tell you, the chief judges meet. We have a conference of chief judges, and there are 24 chief judges throughout the state. Every week, I get information from them as to how you're doing this, how you're doing that, how you're doing that, how you're doing that. We are the leaders of what's going to get done, and we're going to get it done. There's a lot of questions, and I think there's going to be a lot of questions that won't even be answered until after January 1, when we see what happens and how things happen. But we are prepared for every contingency. Every circuit in the state is looking to us to help them with, like the orders. You have to have an order that's done. It has to have specific findings that are in each order for each defendant. We've led in the presentation of those orders. Everybody says, can we have your order? Can we have your order? There are some downstate that are saying, you know what? We're not going to do weekend bond court. We'll let the appellate courts tell us whether we're doing something right or wrong. We don't wait for the appellate court to tell us we're doing something wrong. We take the lead on it. And because of that, we will probably be a benchmark for what appellate courts will do with those circuits that say, geez, we just can't do this over the weekend. I'm sorry. We're going to do it over the weekend. It's going to require all day, Saturday and Sunday, bond court. We are going to have that feed, that feed, or that fill done, completed, and ready to go. We're going to have a bench book for every one of the judges that may be in there. Because Josh Deaton, the judge who's handling it Monday through Friday, isn't going to be the one on Saturday and Sunday. We're going to have a, a fluctuating group of judges in there. We will have continuity. We will have contingencies taken care of and we will have consistency. And that's what attorneys want. That's what incarcerated individuals want is some consistency. And we'll take care of that in a leadership position in the state. One more question. We, we talked about our eviction back, uh, backlog. Is that still a concern to you? Or are we kind of feeding that down with uh, the mediation and other things? We're doing? Well, it, it's always a concern. We have one and a half judges that are doing eviction versus one that used to do evictions and a bunch of other things. But we're filling that need and we're taking care of it. Uh, Judge Bugos and Judge Belford handle our evictions. That mediation center and Kimberly Barrist overseeing that mediation center has just been an amazing assistance, as you can see. And that amount of funding that's available that we have led not only in referrals to it, but in distribution of that. We're cutting through it well. We are not having a backlog. We are efficiently taking care of things, but there is a big buy. At some point, we may not need one and a half judges to do it. We may be able to break it down to one call. But right now, we're allocating that because that's a need of the circuit. And that's a continuing, changing, elastic need that we have. I'm here to coordinate all of those changes and to coordinate personnel to assist in that regard. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Member Garcia. Yeah, thank you. And thank you so much, uh, Chief Pope Joy. Uh, I'm going to reiterate what uh, Member Pachalski said is that your communication with this board has been so deeply appreciated. I really thank you for that and, and for over the last two years. Thank you. I do want to say I did not receive this presentation, so I'm hoping that I can get that out as well as the OHS. One. Definitely. So I, I didn't receive either one of them. So I would like to get those. Not either one of them. Did anybody receive the presentation? 
I thought okay, it was perfect. September, just, Thursday, and Friday. I apologize. I will. Over, I will. Okay. There's a lot of good information there. On my third budget have, presentation, so. I'll make sure it's over here in a timely manner. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. A couple of questions. Um, you said that you need another interpreter just in Spanish, or do you see that you might need another interpreter in like another language? I know there's other languages. That Primarily in Spanish, because okay. that's that's. I can't tell you what percentage, but it's the hugest percentage of all. We do, you have have, a, do you have a service for the other language? We have a service for the other thing, okay. not only a language line on telephone, but we're able to contact people to get in for other services. But they're such rare in nature, we don't need them to be employed full time. The Spanish interpreter, okay. we need full time. Okay, and perfect. They, they're just stretched beyond belief, the four that we have now. And then the other thing was, I think, what was the percentage here in terms of when January comes? 85,000, I think, cases are going to come before the court, um, if I remember right. There's 85,000 outstanding warrants that have been issued maybe within the last month up to a couple of years ago. Right. So this is like going to be like the big, big hit here in January, but then it's going to trickle off into a normal rotation. Of right. That alone will not be the big hit because the warrant only kicks in when that person is found. Okay. and arrested. And then we have to deal with that person coming in. They're not all going to get arrested December 31st and brought in January 1. So that won't be a huge short-term problem, Okay. but it'll be a continuing problem that comes in with all these outstanding cash bond warrants that have been issued. The bigger glut will be every inmate in the DuPage County Courthouse will be required to have a hearing as to whether their bond should stay in, whether they should be detained, not whether their bond should be enforced, because there are no bonds, but whether they should be detained or released. And it's okay. those hearings that have come into play because they're entitled to that on January 1. Right. I'm not sure exactly of our jail population. And That's sure. what I was going to ask next. With I'm not sure our deputy more would be able to assist in that. Do you know approximately the population there? So 540, 540. people. Okay. Now we're, con we're committing to maybe the idea of we have some hearings early, but stay enforcement of that so that through the month of December, maybe we have those hearings. Okay, I'm just going to ask you any to number of things like there. that were were going into play. Some of the problems with having a hearing early is well, the laws are in effect. What kind of hearing are you having? Well, we're trying to help you decide what's going to happen here, defense bar, public defender, and so with their cooperation, that may be one avenue that we go to assist in that regard. Okay, thank you so much for the information. Certainly. All right. Um, well, well, thank you very much for your professionalism at all times. I really appreciate it. Well, and uh, your leadership. I mean, really, uh, tremendous things being done. $3.4 million in eviction assistance. I mean, what a great help to DuPage County residents. Well, and it works both ways. You have all been amazingly respectful and helpful to all of us. And I've appreciated the communication from all of you, and I'm very honored by it. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you. And with that, we will move on to everything else we have to do. Um, I'll take a motion uh, to approve the minutes of uh, August 16th, 2022. We have a motion and second and questions here. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Those are approved. I'll entertain a motion on JPSP 25322, recommendation for approval of contract purchase order to Midwest office interiors for replacement chairs for the courtroom, $67,525.79. We had a motion. Yes, and second. Yes. Uh, questions here? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That's approved. I'll take a motion on JPSP 25422, recommendation for approval of contract purchase to Insight Public Sector Inc. for the purchase of laptops, desktops, UPA, UPSs for uh, this is for the sheriff's office. $257,967.57. And motion and a second. Questions here? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes. I'll take a motion on JPSP 25622, recommendation for approval of contract purchase order to Scientel Solutions for the purchase of Fortinet equipment and the services for the sheriff, $393,446.20. A motion and a second. Questions here? Uh, yes, Matt. Uh, this is Nick, a quick, number quick question. Um, because yesterday was a holiday, I didn't get a chance to get my questions in. Nick's not here. Is he? Okay. Um, my, my question then maybe Eddie, just quickly, was this in the budget for this year? Was this already in the budget? Which one? Oh. All right, we're on. Good morning. So this was a not in our 2022 budget. This was uh, some of the items that Nick discussed as our capital stuff for 2023. 
that we're going to put in the budget that we're going to try and take care of now before the 2023 budget. Because you have the money in the 2022 budget, right? Uh, no. Sales tax. <laughs> Sales tax. So this is this is using that surplus funds we talked about at this finance special call two weeks ago. Um, and at that time, that's when uh, staff was directed by you all uh, that the capital for capital for the FY23 for the sheriff's budget, we'd like to start using uh, or putting it in this to alleviate the FY23 budget. So it's it's coming out of it, in the proposed budget. Uh, these FY23 capital improvements were in the sheriff's original budget. However, in, in Chair Renahan alluded to this earlier about the budget transfer. We're, we're taking it out of the FY23 budget and uh, allocating it based on the surplus funds that we had. And so we're taking the $10.5 million garage off the menu then? Uh, that, to my extent, I think that the directive was that we're only doing the preliminary uh, engineering phase one for, I think it was about $150,000, some, something. I think it was just preliminary. I don't think that that was being done uh, per directive. Thanks, Jason. No problem. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes. Take a motion on JPSP 25722 uh, purchase order to Alliance Technologies Group for CPU, chassis, servers, software, and warranties for the sheriff. $469,920.77. So a motion and a second. Uh, questions here? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. That passes. Moving to resolutions, I'll take a motion on FIR 351-22, acceptance and appropriation of the Tobacco Enforcement Grant for FY23, $6,990 so for the sheriff. Motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That passes. Take a motion on FIR 352-22, resolution additional appropriation for Federal Law Enforcement Justice Fund for the sheriff, $975. Second. All in favor? Any opposed? That passes. I'll take a motion on FIR 355-22, resolution, additional appropriation for the State Drug Traffic Prevention Fund, 15,000. So moved, Sheriff. Motion and second. Questions here? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, then I'll take a motion to combine 8, D, E, and F. Um, these are all for the, the Sheriff, the additional or I'm sorry, these are the ETSB items um, I talked about earlier, but a motion and a second. All in favor? Uh, any opposed? Those are combined. I'll take a motion to approve JPSR 357.22. This is approving DuPage County Sheriff's execution of IGA with ETSB to provide replacement radios for end-of-life support uh, for DuPage emergency dispatch the sheriff's office. Um, JPSR 358.22. This is the, the same... Uh, same type uh, intergovernmental agreement with the ETSB for the state's attorney's office and JPSR 362-22. Um, this is for the Office of a Homeland Security and Emergency Management also to receive um, that's, that support. Questions here? Um, Member Schwarzy, did you wanna address this at all as chair of ETSB? Yeah, thank you all for uh having this on the schedule. Um, it's a great, a great thing that we did um, approximately almost a year ago when uh, ETSB uh, voted to provide new interoperable radios and mobile radios to every fire department, police department within the DuPage ETSB. Uh, most of these items were covered under ETSB. There are a handful, as you see on the agenda that um, the state would not let us purchase, but they are; these entities are still getting the the, the huge discount. Which, uh, if you saw Executive Director Zerwin's um, information that she sent out late last week, you can see that these entities, the uh, state's attorneys, sheriff's department, and the um, Home, Homeland Security office, are saving somewhere in the uh, vicinity of a million dollars. So this is it's a good thing that we're gonna. Uh, uh, pass this and um, it'll save our taxpayers money and it'll help protect uh, all of our public's uh, first responders. So thank you. All right, great, thank you. Um, any questions or comments here? All right, all in favor? Aye, any opposed? Great, that passes. Uh, moving to budget transfers, I'll take a motion on 9A. Uh, this is transfer 3000 to the law library. Motion second, all in favor? Aye, any opposed? That passes. Take a motion on 9B budget transfer. This is $5,000 for a part time pathology assistant with the coroner. 
uh, questions here. All in favor? Aye. Right, that passes. Moving to 9C, uh, I'll take a motion on a transfer of $67,526 to replace chairs on courtroom bench and other areas for the courthouse. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That passes. I'll take a motion on 9D. This is a transfer of $244,000. $270 uh, for the state's attorney's office to enable remote operations. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That passes. Take a motion on 9E, budget transfer. This is uh, for the Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. $12,000 to upgrade 12 year old failing and obsolete technical equipment. All right, motion and a second. Questions here? All in favor? Aye. That passes. Take a motion on budget transfer 9F. This is transferring $270,000 for increased inmate usage of communications, particularly tablets, which have increased features on a new vendor, particularly video conferencing. This is for the jail for the sheriff. And a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Like I said, we're pulling 9G just to, to break it down, provide more information. Um, I'll take a motion on change order 10A. Uh, County Contract 4749-1 issued to Two Brothers Artisan Spirits to decrease $91,506 and close the contract for OHSEM. Motion and a second. Uh, questions here? Hand sanitizer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. Great. We had to, yeah, we had to ask, right? <laughs> All right, I'll take a motion uh, to, let's see, to approve grant proposal notification uh, FY 2023 tobacco grant 6,993 for the sheriff's office at 11A. Your motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That passes. I'll take a motion uh, to approve a grant proposal notification 4822 emergency management performance grant $629,961.36 for, for Homeland Security. We have a motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That passes. I'll take a motion on grant proposal notification 4922 DuPage County Hazard Mitigation Plan update $77,850 for Homeland Security. We had a motion. We had a second. Do uh, you have any questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you all for your patience. Um, moving on, do we have any old business? Old business. All right. Do we have any new business? Um, Yes, member to start. Um, thank you. I, you know, I got into, um, I first ran for public office in 2009 because of transparency. And as a lifelong journalist, journalist for you know, more than four decades, it, transparency is uh, important to me. I'm just wondering, I'd like to um, ask, is a federal agency investigating the sheriff's office? No. Is the FBI investigating the sheriff's office? No. Um, is the DuPage County Sheriff's Office Lieutenant facing the Merit Commission? Yes. Can you discuss? Personnel. Um, is there a FOIA out about all of this from the Naperville Sun? Has the, in the past six months, has the Sheriff's Office been investigated by the FBI? There was an audit done by the FBI, but it was not an investigation, it was a standard audit. Our follow-up on that re resulted in the Merit Commission investigation. I would appreciate that if our Sheriff's Office, as a DuPage County board member, if our Sheriff's Office is being investigated or audited or however we want to word it by the FBI, that we should have been informed as a, as a as board members, um, at least in executive session. And I'd like to ask the chairman of JPS if perhaps we could set up an executive session to discuss this. I would offer that uh, it's a standard audit that's done to all agencies. It's not just us. But Member Sire, if I can answer your question. What happened was as the state of Illinois, their LEADS program, which we run our driver's license everything through, was audited by the FBI and the DOJ. The sheriff's office was not. Every state agency was audited as part of this audit. It's a routine audit that's done every single year. So this was not something that was specifically done to the sheriff's office. 
State Police Leeds was audited. As users of Leeds, we were audited. We had one audit entry for a warrant that was entered, simple random audit. Through the federal system, we had 10 different entries that were audited, a simple random audit. That audit resulted in an internal investigation with charges that we can't discuss here now because it's still pending. So it didn't happen in the opposite time frame. No, this was that, all. That was the all. person um, used leads for personal reasons or whatever, and then the FBI audited. You're that, saying the FBI audited and then found that this person used leads for... Um, that assumption that you're making there is incorrect. Okay, this, so this why... This has nothing to do with leads being used by our office. The lead system was audited. Another federal database was audited. This person, it has nothing to do with leads. And we can't discuss it any further than that. So the person who is in front of the Merit Commission has nothing to do with the leads investigation? Correct. Thank you, Chairman. All right, well, thank you. Thank you for that. I think we'll take it under advisement as to any next steps. Um, do we have any other new business? All right, I'll take a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone.